what a privilege to be back with you again. Um, I especially appreciate prayer as I leave Monday to minister there in Boca Raton in the evening of the 8th to mainly Latins. The first time ever after a fund event for uh, Latin Americans. Though I, though I speak Spanish, it's a bit rusty, so I think there's translation. I'm going to, on that same trip, hope to visit Dale Rotan and one shell village where it's been hit so hard by the storm. Hope to visit quite a few other people. Phil Parshall lives at the same place as Jack and Kathy Rendell, where my, uh, I hope to touch base and then fly off to Nashville. I probably will not be doing a major blogs for the next two weeks. I hope to maybe on the trip do some short ones, which I used to do all the time before I got into this regular one a week. I wanted to mention, especially to those of you in the UK, that this is tremendous brochure. Maybe you've already had it. But it's the importance of considering prayerfully leaving a legacy to God's work. And it has a full presentation of some of the main, the main thrusts of OM around the globe at this time. And you can easily contact our OM office or me. Everybody, I think, knows my email address. And I will forward it to, to the office. I'm in the midst of doing a lot of personal letters going through the whole alphabet on my database, but uh, I'm not going to be able to finish. So some of you may not have your calendar. You might be accustomed to getting my special calendar. I don't have a systematic way of distributing it, but um, if any of you want one of these, any gift to my Bible fund, to any OM office, just mention special projects. And I'll send the calendar. And if you want the pocket, the pocket calendar, the Americans say pocket diary. A lot of people don't use these so much in the digital age. But these are two items that people who will give something toward our uh, Bible fund, which is giving out tens of thousands of Bibles, often to new believers, often to people who can't afford them all over Africa, of course, even more all over India. And we don't have, of course, the funds. So we're praying more people might get involved. And this particular message is very different. I'm going to be talking about 10 people that I had the privilege of knowing. They are all with the Lord. They're well-known people. And I share this keeping in mind that totally unknown behind the scene people are just as important. But in the Bible, certain people are emphasized from G Genesis to Revelation. And Paul especially is given a lot of attention, a lot of stuff about his life. We wonder why he's sharing that. People are important. God does anoint people for a particular ministry. And the key is what God accomplishes, not necessarily the people. But all of these people I knew, some of them better than others. And so this is just a tribute kicked off by the fact that I've just done a tribute to Brother Andrew, who's recently gone to be with the Lord. This has to be rather quick. And I hope to follow it up with 10 more people. And then later on, uh, 10 more people. Maybe when I get to the third presentation, there'll be people, a few that might still be with us. But of course, the first person is Billy Graham. That is just one of his many books, Secret of Happiness. Huge blessing and encouraged me. And of course, he has left behind such a great legacy. Some of you might be new and not my own story. Know my, my own story. Know my story that I didn't know Jesus. I had a little bit of Christianity culture, sort of. A lady prayed for me, sent me a gospel of John, and that caused me to go to this Billy Graham meeting, March 3rd, 1955, where I was born again. And I do hope uh, you'll take time. You can find so much about Billy Graham on YouTube. Listen to some of his messages, maybe read his biography. The second person that I knew, um, probably the second most influential person in my life, 
was Oswald J. Smith. I've just come from Toronto. I'm down with Charles Price, who was pastor there for many years, one of the successors of O.J. Smith. This book is one of the most significant books in the early history of OM, originally called Passion for Souls. That's where I got the vision for Afghanistan. He was one of the greatest fundraisers for global missions and teaching people how to use the faith promise system to raise funds, which eventually released millions from hundreds and maybe thousands of churches. Uh, it's a long time ago now, but the legacy continues in, in different ways. And I hope you might have time to read some of his books, find out more about his life. And then the third person is Bill Bright. I actually met Bill Bright, Lauren Cunningham, and Jack McAllister all at the same time in California. It will soon be 60 years ago, right after the big summer liftoff of OM in Europe, aiming toward much bigger uh, mobilization in 63. And Bill Bright and, and I stayed linked ever since. A very different person for me. I had struggled sometimes understanding what he was saying in, in his vision just seemed to be so huge. Later in his life, he, he sort of apologized for mainly just being focused on Campus Crusade, who had changed their name and got more widely involved with the whole body of Christ. And we also were able to get more involved. I had the privilege of speaking at his memorial service here in London. I'll never forget that special event when also I got more linked uh, with Vanette, an amazing wife who lived quite a few years longer than, uh, than Bill did. The successor of Bill Bright, Steve Douglas, we just heard this week, has gone home to be with Jesus. And then Buck Singh, Buck Singh of India. Again, one of the more amazing persons. We've got books by him, but we can't, haven't been able to find one for this presentation. The way that we got linked together in India when people thought this can never happen. Uh, many missionaries were quite critical of him because he was doing a new thing, planting new style churches, more Indian, very different. Um, of course, he was a dynamic personality. And so he got criticized, but he's a man that knew the word of God more than almost anyone I've ever met. And as soon as we met, that's a whole story. We became very close and he opened some of the greatest doors I ever had for ministry in India, including his holy convocations in which thousands of people will come. I remember one, especially in Chennai, called Madras back in those days when we had three interpretations, Hindi, Tamil and Telugu. But he had some of the best uh, interpreters that, that I've ever, ever experienced. And I just thank the Lord for the partnership we had and fellowships linked with their original uh, ministry base called Hebron. They, they exist all over the world. And the meeting I had in Atlanta a couple of months ago was actually people linked together with those fellowships. Just another total amazing story. And then uh, number five is Elizabeth Elliot. What a privilege after reading her books, being impacted by her books, to eventually meet her, to have her come and speak at a main OM leaders event. Uh, of course, we were always to, involved in distributing her books. That's just one of them, Shadow of the Almighty. Um, and of course, it's all about the Alka Indians and the martyrdom of her husband and others. She has a number of other books and we've had the privilege of distributing thousands of them around the world. And then the next person is a woman named Joy Ritterhoff. You wouldn't know her name, but one of the most amazing dynamic women I've ever met. She founded Gospel Recordings, which I think operates under a different name. She was ahead of her day with the aim to get a recording that people could listen to in every language of the world. It's just an amazing story, and it's just another example. We're talking about a woman who was into the action in the 50s and 60s and beyond. And it's just so important to realize how 
how involved women were in global missions. Someone even just the other day got comfortable about a woman speaking in their church. What, what, what a contradiction. We were total happy for women to go all over the world, speak publicly all over, all over the place, get martyred, and we make them our heroes. But if one stands up locally in our church, certain churches, of course, they will be in difficulty. Only my messiology theology understands some of that. I might write a sequel called Folliology. Praise God for Joy Ritteroff and that that work continues. And then the next person is Dr. Francis Schaefer. Again, we corresponded when he first came to Europe. I didn't realize what God was doing through this man. Soon we were linked. Soon some of our people were going there to go through his training course at Labrie, which still continues. And then we we had a great personal walk through one of the parks here in London. And I invited him as a main speaker at one of the OM conferences in the mid 60s. We were very close friends ever since. His dear wife, Edith, is just as much part of that global ministry. And she lived much longer. I visited her in Rochester where Dr. Schaefer had undergone treatment for his cancer. And I had the privilege of being at her funeral there near Labrie in Switzerland. And then the next person is Brother Andrew. Of course, there's been a lot on YouTube about Brother Andrew. I just did another brief tribute, um, but this is just adding to the other tributes and mentioning the fact that he also uh, put together many books. His most famous one, of course, was God's Smuggler. But this is one called The Calling. And his books upset a lot of people. We need to always remember when we read a book, it's not the Bible. It's not God's word. We have to take what the Holy Spirit gives us. And if it's something we don't agree with or don't understand, we can, we can just leave that. And then uh, there's this amazing man, Richard Wormbrandt. Richard Wormbrandt, known for torture. And again, this, this is one of his books that's not so famous, but Tortured for Christ became one of the most widely distributed books uh, in history in many languages. And the organization he left behind, which is functions in different countries, uh, an American voice of the martyrs that we're very linked with here. It's it's called Release. And I had a privilege of speaking not long ago at one of their international meetings. We're all different agencies whose roots went back to the ministry of Richard Wormrock came together. Again, only eternity will tell the story. And then there's Roy uh, Hessian. Of course, we've talked a lot on our blogs about Roy Hessian, so we'll not say much more. But this is uh, a simplified edition of Calvary Road done by an Australian missionary in India. And for people whose uh, second language is English, this is actually better than the full edition of Calvary Road. And of course, we're trying to flood this out around the world. Well, I hope just hearing about some of these people is an inspiration and a challenge. They had a lot of differences. They weren't all on the same page on a whole variety of areas, but they had the basics. The Bible was the word of God, the atoning death of the Lord Jesus Christ, the resurrection, and of course, taking the gospel to everyone throughout the whole world, demonstrating, and they were strong on this, demonstrating love, grace, and forgiveness every step of the way. We can learn so much from those who have gone on. I certainly speak personally about that. And we need to, of course, make, and we need to, of course, make sure we're passing it on to the next generation, which may get more difficult. God bless you. As you consider this, you can watch it again if you want to write down the titles of these books. Most of them are available through Amazon or bookshops. If you somehow desperately can't find one, you can, one, you can always email me. God bless you. See you soon or at least in a couple of weeks.